And year to date, with all this calamity, all the negative talk of Bitcoin, Bitcoin's jumped 70%. Yep. Bitcoin has had a meteoric rise in popularity and value in recent years, cementing its position as a major player in the financial world. However, this success has not gone unnoticed by governments and financial institutions, many of which have been critical of cryptocurrency. One major opponent of Bitcoin has been the Federal Reserve, which has been vocal in its criticism of the cryptocurrency. The Federal Reserve has expressed concerns about the lack of regulations surrounding Bitcoin and its potential use in illegal activities like money laundering and terrorism financing. Governments around the world have also taken steps to regulate or even ban Bitcoin. China, for example, has banned initial coin offerings, ICOs, and cryptocurrency exchanges due to concerns over financial stability and illegal activities. Despite these challenges, Bitcoin advocates argue that cryptocurrency still holds value and can provide significant benefits to investors. One of Bitcoin's key advantages is its decentralized nature, which enables more transparency and security in transactions. Furthermore, Bitcoin's limited supply and increasing demand have led to substantial price appreciation, making it an attractive investment opportunity. Some analysts predict that Bitcoin's value could continue to rise in the coming years, exceeding even its current all-time high. Despite criticism and opposition, Bitcoin remains a viable asset for investors seeking alternative investment opportunities. Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors and Chairman of Hive Blockchain Technologies, Holmes believes that crypto will continue to thrive regardless of the attempts to suppress it. In a recent interview with Daniela Camon on the Stansberry Research Channel, he shared some unique and very insightful ideas on why crypto will continue to thrive while the banks are gasping for air. Before we listen to him, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. That China got, went anti-Bitcoin because they're coming out with their own digital currency. Uh, and what you have to be worried about is that digital currency had a, if you didn't spend the money, it would be vaporized. You, you lost it. So they really want to control society. Yeah. Uh, and so now we get this anti-narrative in the U.S. Is it because the Treasury wants to come up with their own uh, currency? Yeah. And, and, and now you've got the governor running for president from uh, uh, Florida. Yeah, DeSantis. Uh, DeSantis. And he's coming out. to He doesn't want it because right. there'll be an infringement right. on your rights. So the whole idea of gold, gold is a decentralized asset. Right. And Bitcoin is just a digital asset. It's decentralized. And I just believe that you should have a small component in a portfolio and rebalance it. And year to date, with all this calamity, all the negative talk of Bitcoin, Bitcoin's jumped 70%. Yep. So it, gold's up, uh, what, 18, 19%, but nothing compared to, um, sorry, no, the NASDAQ is, it's had a bounce here. But I, I think that this, talking about the big picture, that's good news, is that since I was born, yes. In the third year of the president's term, the market's up 90 some odd percent of the time. And it's up between 13 if it's a Democrat and 17 percent if it's a Republican president in the third year. So we are in the third year and you see the Jets, our Jets ETF, it's flying above the S&P. It's outperforming the S&P. The PMIs for, because China's opened its economy, they've now gone global PMIs above 50. So I think, you know, the year, don't get caught up so much in the negative narrative right. that it could be if you're not long, you're wrong. Uh, the, all these yeah. countries, like now the, the Bitcoin's coming out, uh, they all want to come up with their own currency yes. because Bitcoin validated the blockchain. What's really important is that the blockchain was created in 91 by Americans. And then we go another decade further and it was released as the SHA-256, which is the encryption used for your iPhone for facial recognition, yeah. also used for Bitcoin. And then nine years later comes out Bitcoin because it was the amalgamation of the two and it's American innovation. So I believe there's a Japanese uh, founder, but really it's just another name. Uh, it's an American creation. It was a defense department, uh, DARPA, uh, the U.S. government that created SHA-256. What are the lessons that can be learned from crypto? Probably the easiest is board uh, a yacht club. Uh, they can go to YouTube and learn about it, but how they created a, a club and a fraternity that that original 10,000 uh, animations done with AI of, a, of an ape uh, it went out at $200 and a year later, yeah. all the additions were with 600,000. So it created a culture, it created a club, and the only way you could get onto the Zoom, the Discord look and talk to other people is if you were a member and you had to own the art. So it's a cultural phenomenon. 
And that's what I, when I first got into curious about this business in 2017, I go to a conference in New York and the keynote speaker is a CEO of Fidelity. And she doesn't speak at an investment conference and she's talking about Bitcoin. And the biggest booth was IBM. I said, well, something big is happening in blockchain and people spend $1,000 a ticket to get in. Uh, then there's 30,000 people spent this in Miami. They're in Barcelona three weeks ago. Uh, it's in England. So the, the ecosystem for Bitcoin, there's 12,000 independent nodes around the world validating transactions. So it's a really interesting group of people that want to have this mechanism that's released all this other innovation. But I really looked at it as being, I have an asset class and you have a diversified portfolio. I've always advocating of a 10% weighting in gold, just like Ray Dalio at Bridgewater. He always has for his parity trading some gold. And, and along comes this Bitcoin and the gold bugs are telling me about it. And I said, you know, that's interesting, a, 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 an asset class right. with maybe 3% a jalapeno, but you can't eat a plate of jalapenos. But the diehards, the advocates, the really hardcore, yeah. they're only long Bitcoin. Let me ask you this, as an operator in the space, how concerned are you of coming regulation or do you see it as a positive? Well, I think it could be a positive, but it concerns you when they shut down banks the way they did Signature uh, and, and how that took place. So that does create a concern. Uh, and, and how I saw in Canada, the accounting board uh, was used as a weapon to go after any of them was crypto, not to get auditors. You, you have to support getting auditors to actually chase away crooks like Sam Bankman. Uh, you, you have to have lots of auditors and make it easy and auditors not to be attacked by the audit committee. Rand Nooner, founder and host of Crypto Banter, predicts that Bitcoin will rise to over $50,000 this year due to the Federal Reserve's decision to pivot and cut interest rates. However, he believes that Bitcoin will fall short of reaching a new all-time high. Nooner shared his thoughts in a recent interview with Michelle McRae, lead anchor and editor-in-chief at Kick'em News. Nooner, who has over two decades of experience in finance and is also co-founder and CEO of OnChain Capital, stated that we're going into a Fed loosening cycle. He believes that this shift will drive the price of Bitcoin up in the coming months. Listen to what Nooner has to say about Bitcoin's potential growth in the current economic climate. And I think that as much as the Fed would like to tighten and as much as Jerome Powell kept a very strong demeanor in his last conference, the market didn't believe what he said. He said that on the dot plot, there would be no rate drops this year. But if you look at the Fed expectations, at the expectations of the market, the market's expecting three rate cuts this year. So yeah. I think as much as the Fed wants to convince us that they are going to remain in a tightening cycle, I think we're inevitably going to go into a loosening cycle. Loosening cycle means more liquidity. More liquidity equals good for Bitcoin. And so I think if we look at Bitcoin, I don't, I don't want to make short-term predictions, but let's say three to six months, I think definitely the number is higher than 28,000 where we are today. I think the high, the high is depending how far you want to look at it. But you see, I don't know if liquidity, if liquidity is something that, that, that changes in three months. But if you tell me between now and the end of the year, I definitely see Bitcoin going above 50,000 this year. Um, if the Fed, if everything stays as it is, set par, uh, I think that that we definitely see a Bitcoin around 50,000 later on this year. Um, is it going to happen in the next three months? It's very hard to understand how much liquidity will flow in the market into the market in the next three months. So very difficult to call. But definitely I'm a bull this time around. I definitely think before the, it, 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 during the next halving cycle, so if you follow the, the halving cycle uh, uh, that I showed you, I do think that as we progress, um, into the halving, um, we will see the new highs, but we're talking about that's a year away, year, a year and a bit away. Amidst the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle, Rand Neumer, the founder of Crypto Banter, has made a forecast that Bitcoin will surpass $50,000 in 2023. The Federal Reserve increased its key policy rate by 25 basis points on March 22nd and raised interest rates by 475 basis points over the past year to fight against high inflation. Although the troubles with Binance, Bitcoin's value has risen by 72% year-to-date, and the overall cryptocurrency market cap has grown by 49% since January. Nooner believes that Bitcoin's rally is due to its increasing role as a safe haven, similar to gold, during times of financial and geopolitical instability. In fact, Nooner observes that Bitcoin is starting to have a higher correlation towards gold, and it may actually be an improvement to gold. Do you agree with Nooner's prediction? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. What do you think of Nooner's prediction that Bitcoin will go over $50,000 in 2023? 
Please let us know your opinion in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Stay savvy.